Okay, so I'm going to let you guys get started. Yeah, ask them the question, and you might need to prompt them again for each person so that they're not um, on the spot with missing the question. Um, thank you for signing basic conflict opportunities. How did you handle that? My own team, I think it's a conflict thing. We are all disagreeing on how we want to approach um, the season. So we had to sit down, come together, and uh, collaborate and use each other's ideas rather than arguing. Um, and this resulted in us being successful, and we were able to have a successful season and accomplish um, our goals. I'm going to just ask the question again. It's easier. Um, thank you for finding space to ask the other team how to do that life. Um, one team I've had a conflict where me and another person have had disagreement, and because there was tension, I kept my distance a little bit, and so I felt there was time comfortable to approach them and have a conversation about the situation so that we can make a move. Um, thank you for having me face the conflict on our team. How did you handle that? I'm trying to say I can't come sit on the team. It's like when uh, us DBs in the back, like, we are going to go, like, or Paul, we want to do, like, play man or play first. And, like, some people, like, Um, so freshman year of college, uh, there was a lot of individuals wanting to do their own thing. Uh, we all had to come together and uh, realize this is a team effort. Uh, we need to change the whole uh, program to uh, face. And pretty much we all started working together more and getting uh, away from the individual uh, characteristics. Great. Thank you for signing the face to the team as we have a lot. Um, in high school, I was on a panel about how to dress shows um, at my all girls school, and we were all screaming about what should be worn as far as like leggings or like, shirts that cover our butts and such. So we all had to like come together and talk about how it was going to affect the school and what like, when should it affect our learning. So we had to work through that. Great. So I'm going to keep the camera rolling before we get to the next question, Andrew. Let's give them some feedback, right? Tough, tough thing to get up there, right, on the spot. So what did, what did, do they, did they do well? Did they follow the situation, action, result? Yeah. I think they did, and I thought they were thinking quickly this week. They didn't really anticipate things. So most of the time I heard a time frame, right? And I'll move the, the <coughs> slide up there so we can reinforce what we're learning. Time frame, tell me what your role was, right? I was a sophomore. I was, uh, I was on the um, committee to come up with the, the uh, dress code, and we had to look at this issue. We resolved it by doing X, Y, and Z. So those are the types of things that you'll want to, um, you'll want to see in your homework that you're providing that's due Wednesday as well. Be really thoughtful about it. Make sure that you're going to take those steps in ways that make sense for you. And <laughs> so this is kind of the, the prompts, if you will. And if you want to use your um, your cheat sheets or whatever, your prep sheets, um, when you're up here, that's fine. So you can take notes. Um, it's not necessary. But why don't we start, uh, Andrew, why don't we start with Morgan and we'll go back <coughs> this way with the question. Okay. Tell me about a time when you needed to get information from someone who wasn't very responsive. What did you do? Um, well, I tried reaching out to them multiple times. And if you can't get in contact with them, you can always try to reach out to someone that they're close with to see if they can get into contact with them, or a coworker, or a boss, or someone All right. Uh, tell me about a time when you needed to get information from someone who wasn't very responsive. So in my sales class, I had a cold calling assignment. I was supposed to contact a uh, successful uh, general manager of an organization. And once the first person uh, didn't answer or reply in time, uh, I started cold calling uh, more and more. And I uh, decided that I wasn't going to give up until I got a response. So I finally contacted uh, the general manager until I got a response. Tell me about a time when you needed to get information very 
Good. Give him the question one more time. Tell me about a time when you needed to get information from someone who wasn't very responsive. Uh, I just kept calling him on a negative amount or whatever, and anyway, I was trying to get So what did you do? Had a good result? Yes. Okay, tell us about that. Um, well, I got what I needed, and I was calling for like a job interview. Like every time I was calling, like the manager wanted to answer, like, and then like he was never there. And one day I just called and got um, needed there, and I ended up getting the job. Great. Okay. <laughs> Jalen. Uh, tell me about the time you needed to get information from someone who wasn't very responsive. Um, in my sort of event management class last semester, I had a project where I needed to interview um, someone from a company regarding their job and I talked <coughs> out to someone who went here that worked for the ACC and I didn't get the prompt for maybe about a week but I kind of wanted to keep uh, pursuing that because of who she was and I knew it would be a good interview but I also had like um, someone else that I could interview if that didn't work out so but eventually she did answer and I did get a response so I just want to be prepared for both options. Tell me about a time when you needed to get information from someone who wasn't very responsive. Last year, I was applying for a job back at home, and I couldn't make the interview because I'm in North Carolina, not Massachusetts. So I was trying to contact uh, the director, and he was not very responsive with me. So I just had to be um, very consistent with emailing him and calling him to make sure he was understanding uh, my situation, and eventually. Uh, I got in contact with him and I was able to interview and get the job. All right, congratulations. Let's, let's just hear from you about how that went. How did you feel about that um, as the interviewer, as the candidate? I pretty well in front of people. Hey, I get a phone number, it's like my hands are sweating on right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this is one of those things, the more you practice it, the better you're going to get. It's not that it's difficult but they are looking for a specific type of answer, it's good for you to know that. It's not a secret, right? You can go out on the internet and there's plenty of stuff that says, or YouTube videos, of how to answer a behavioral interview question. And the, the 30 I have are just the start, right? You can, you can really reach, um, research them. So there's not a secret to it, but it is a, a bit of a formula, right? Anybody else, Morgan, how did you feel with this? Uh, one thing I really saw, I get really nervous when mm -hmm. I freeze up or I start repeating myself, just like if it's in part mm -hmm. of like the question. <coughs> you just have to like kind of try to stay calm and make sure what you're saying. Right. And that's where the preparation comes in. If you're hearing the questions in class, you're practicing them verbally, orally, and then you're writing them down, you're reinforcing those same answers. So it should start to um, create a blueprint in your mind about how to answer these questions, but it does take some practice. It's not a, it's not a quick hit. Any other thoughts, feedback? Yes, lady. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's like, like having my class be more like a professional interview where So even with a little bit of prep from last week, you felt like you, that, that helped you? Yeah. And, and then a few minutes or a few seconds before? Because the second question I didn't go over, but with this, um, this time that I had to like hear everybody else's and just get an idea of the time that something like that happened to me, uh, okay, yeah, I was able to help Okay, good. Yeah, I'm I like, usually I like to go first because um, it makes me nervous when other people would give ideas first, but being at the end, I actually found it easier because with everyone else, I thought of something else that actually happened to me that would be better to talk about than what like, I was originally going to say. So you'll eventually have a collection of stories, right, that you can talk about in behavioral interview situations. If you keep a journal or you have a, a calendar, start to write down what those stories are. The time that I worked, um, or the time that I did the dress code, the time that I worked in a retail environment, the time that I had a problem with a teammate where, where there was tension and I had to resolve it, for time I tried to you know, reach an employer, 
you want to um, start to keep a catalog of these stories so you can review them before you go into interview situations. Especially if you're going to take advantage of the, um, the uh, job fairs that are on campus. Really great practice. You don't have to go get the job of your dreams, but it sure doesn't hurt to try. Um, but use it as practice and do it on your feet so that you're um, kind of more on point. If you're standing up, blood flowing a lot quicker to your brain, so your, your thoughts are a little quicker, so you're uh, not as inclined to have an issue. All right, thank you very much. We'll start with our next panel. <coughs> and so I need five more, five more folks, so make your way. <laughs> to go and Dean you want to start first and we'll start with Claire okay describe a time when your team or company was undergoing a change how did that impact you and how did you with that um in high school I was on the tennis team and we got a new coach so it took a little time to get used to their new um, I guess coaching style so we kind of learned to adapt to Describe a time when your team or company was undergoing some change. How did that impact you, and how did you adapt? Um, I work for the driving range on campus, and we transitioned from um, having uh, the workers get the ball for the people using the driving range to a machine. Um, and with that transition came like, a lot of difficulties because we had to uh, teach the Customers, how to use the machine, um, but now that the machine has like settled in and customers know how to use it, it actually makes it a lot easier for people to get their own ball. Describe a time when your team or company had to change. How did that impact you, and how did you adapt? Um, when I was on the basketball team in high school, in my eleventh grade year, we got a new head coach, and it was like really hard for the team because we had really different relationships with the support and coming in. It took like a lot of time, like the team didn't really like mesh very well with the coach. But I mean, we eventually learned how to just like communicate and talk to each other. So we got used to it. Describe a time when your team or company was undergoing some change. How did that impact you and how did you adapt? Um, my senior year in high school, uh, we got a new head lacrosse coach, and as an upcoming senior captain, and I met with the um, coach a lot because didn't know any of the players and any of the teachers um, at our school. So I met with her and my other co-captains um, a couple of <coughs> weeks having lunch and dinner and such, um, just kind of get used to her and talk to her about the plans for the season. So it went to really good. Um, thank you. Describe a time when your team or company was undergoing some change. How did that impact you and how did you adapt? Um, so in high school, for four years, we had uh, four different straight cheerleading coaches, so it was hard to try to get close with them and comfortable and let them tell us what to do. So as a captain, um, I kind of like took over and took charge and try to make the team feel more comfortable um, and try to get closer with the coaches and just to um, let me know if anything, if they need anything or help the challenge. Okay. Feedback so far on situation action result. Quick responses, right? What else did they do well? Right. What were some of the results that you heard? Yes. I think Amelia, you did say everything went smoothly. Everybody else, you kind of led me up to that. But I didn't hear, and it was successful. So that's what you want to do. You want to kind of close that loop. It's not about bragging, it's about the situation was really productive at that point. They based on my input, 
in my team leadership, right? Okay, great. So we'll give you a round of applause for that first one. And then, um, who did I give a second question to? Will? Will's going to ask, and why don't you start with Summer, and we'll move down this way, okay? Tell me about a time you were under a lot of pressure. What was going on, and how did you get through it? Um, so in high school, I had an internship with an orthodontist, and so I was about 18, 17, and um, the other internship uh, students were about 22, like in college, they already had their degree, um, so that was really hard to step up and um, try to accomplish what um, they had. Um, so I definitely have learned from that, and Great. Good learning. Result or learning, that's what you want to reinforce. Okay. okay. Alright, uh, tell me about a time you were under a lot of pressure. What was going on and how did you get through it? Um, this summer I was working for a jewelry company and um, on my second day I was by myself in the store and a customer came in that wasn't very happy with something that she bought and I had no idea how to um, work the cash at the store or <coughs> They, did they do well in terms of results? Because this round was different than the first round, right? Yes, Cameron. When the first phase, uh, all of them were when the phase of issue. Uh, they made a good uh, effort in like, coming up with a solution on like, how they overcome adversity. So when adversity kicks in, you know, you didn't agree with the circumstances. You just kind of found yourself and found like, a way to get over it. So uh, that was pretty positive. That's what they, what other things they do well <coughs> with the process? So did you find it was easier this, this time around, like the second time practicing it? So sometimes practicing aloud, that could be practicing with a friend <coughs> or a colleague, uh, a, another professor if it's in um, your field of study. So um, I thought so, did you have something to I was going to say each person like stayed at the time, right? Mm -hmm. At the very beginning so it's easy to know when things are happening. Great. So, time frame, the action that you took, and then I heard results. I heard I learned something from it, and um, I, or I had a, a result that was positive. So Summer, when you got to the mm -hmm. end, you thought, well, is that enough to say I learned something from it? It is. So just when you get to the end, stop, and then let them ask the next question. Okay? Great. Great job, everybody. So we've got our next panel. I've got to keep track of time here.
What did they do well using the technique? Kendra. Um, yeah, I think so too. Mm -hmm. Upright. Some nerves, I saw some nerves coming up, but not too bad. What else? What else did they do well? So I heard results with everybody, right? Really concise, summarizing the problem and your role involved with it. So good use of the technique. It works when you use it. It doesn't, does it feel forced as a listener? It doesn't, right? So these tools are meant to help you be successful, get to the point and get you out of maybe a, um, uh, 
it may, a habit's the wrong word, but um, the um, trap of maybe rambling because of nerves. So these, uh, these tools can be very helpful. All right, so we've got a next question. Cameron's going to ask. Okay, so let's start with, um, with Jack. Tell me about a time you were dissatisfied in your work. What could have been done to make it better? What could have been done to make it better? Um, in high school, uh, I was dissatisfied with certain things that were going on in my uh, baseball program. Uh, you know, concerning like uh, practice times and, and the way things were going out of practice with myself and, and uh, other other uh, teammates of mine, and they had, we had communicated amongst ourselves and um, how we wanted to address the situation. And then I ended up going in and having a conversation with our coach, and uh, we came up with a solution. Uh, to the problem and everyone was, everyone was pleased with the uh, results. Tell me about the time you were dissatisfied in your work. What could have been done to make it better? Um, so my senior year of high school, I played soccer and uh, we had a different coach that year and he was like, he was just telling us like very new and he was like trying to figure out like all these different things and like, the trials of different things and like the system and like playing time we had before and like our practice schedule was like just working just fine and he was going to do all these different things. So we all had to like sit down and talk with him about like what we needed to do with this team to like continue to do the next play. Tell me about a time you were dissatisfied in the work. What could have been done to make it better? My freshman year I was part of the business LLC and the two ambassadors and the advisor were they lacked communication, I guess, for the rest of LLC. And as a freshman, it was really hard to like, kind of understand when things were supposed to be happening because we didn't really know a lot about the campus at that point. And with that lack of communication, nobody was able to go to the event because we didn't know when they were happening and where. So we actually sat down with the ambassador and the advisors and told them, hey, can you just reach out to us via email, via group me, and let us know if these details the day before or a few hours before the event. And by the time second semester came around, the events went a lot more smoothly, the attendance was good, and everybody enjoyed their day there. Uh, tell me about a time you were dissatisfied in your work. Uh, what could have been done to make it better? Uh, my senior year of high school, me and my two fellow captains on the football team um, felt like we were losing the team. A lot of guys were trying to play one man football instead of team football. Um, and we didn't really know how to handle the situation being seniors in high school um, and trying to confront a team. And we ended up bringing in an outside source um, from a pro football team to come in and talk how important the team was. Um, and we actually went through a Navy SEAL training as a team to get through our conflict and build support for each other. Tell me about a time you were dissatisfied in your work and what could have been done to make it better? So uh, my question is, uh, High school, uh, I thought our freshman baseball team didn't have people at time to captain practicing. Uh, by senior year, we made these captain practices. They went from 15 people per practice to 45 people per practice. We were able to up the attendance of practice during my senior year and last year. Great, thanks, Chuck. <laughs> All right, so I'm hearing the situation, the actions, and everyone. Which, um, what results did you hear as you're going through? Who talked about a result? Mm-hmm. Yeah. training and you know, turned things around. Daniel talked about the, the improvement. <laughs> right. So um, one thing, Hunter, you got right to the point where you talked about the success of the result, but you didn't say, and after all this, this time, we, we ended up working through um, a better team schedule or made it more comfortable for the students. So just close that loop up and I think you'll be fine. Yeah, um, I Cameron. thought everyone did good uh, not rambling on the bed, mm -hmm. uh, trying to stay positive and get to the point of positivity and uh, just kind of showing like <coughs> you showed where the issue came in but then you also added to it by showing the solution and staying positive through it, not rambling on it. Great. Nice job. So we're going to do uh, one more round taking volunteers. So this is extra practice for you and a way to get some feedback. So feel free to pop up to the front. The more practice you have, the more effective you'll be.
All right. Thank you. Can you take a breath now? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're ready for you. So Jalen's going to start. Go ahead, Jack. Um, this summer at uh, my job, I work in a like customer service, like hospitality at a hotel. So uh, there was a uh, complaining. Uh, there was somebody complaining about their room at the hotel. So instead of waiting, uh, I took her, she was waiting at the front desk for somebody there. Instead, I took her right to my manager, and she solved the problem right away. So I was telling you, you saw a problem and took initiative to correct it, rather than waiting for someone else to do it. This summer, <coughs> I worked at a golf course, there's a grass room, and one day, in like the middle of the bed, this lady came over to us. We were working on bunkers, and she was talking about her golf cart had stopped moving, and so I took her on a John Deere, the tractor thing, and just drove her up and got her in the cart instead of uh, calling my boss and having him come down this one. Describe the time when you saw a problem and took the initiative to correct it, rather than waiting for someone else to do it. So at the beginning of this year, um, I noticed, and my friend and I noticed that our organization wasn't really running too smoothly as like a fraternity, so and myself and I, him, took the initiative to create like a PowerPoint slide and present it to everyone in the organization, pointing out like the flaws we had seen and you know solutions to those flaws. And um, you know, in the ensuing weeks after, we've noticed that behavior at these meetings and just overall has been much better. What feedback can we give? What did they do well? Good body language. Good body language. Mm -hmm. What else? to the point, nice and concise. Um, yes, Maddie. Yeah, really important. Derek, what were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, they said it was clear, but they also spoke that it was clear and they slowed in equally fast and right. they were mobile and everything like that. Probably the second round. Mm -hmm. Sometimes once we get going, we get better as we get going. We get a little bit more confident. We have um, a met better demeanor. I would think after you've mastered this, um, the formula, the situation, action, result, and I'm not picking on you guys in general, but as a group, Let's start to think about our diction, right? Let's th start to think about the words that we use to describe. So when we say me, myself, you actually don't mean me or myself, you mean I, right? So think about your grammar because you're college educated, you're expected to demonstrate those, um, that kind of diction, especially if you're client facing. So that's just the next step. The first step here, where I wanna get you through today and through your homework on Wednesday is really get this formula down. Start to get that as a practice in your mind. You can always work on these like, kind of fine tuning, the polishing the apple as I call it, um, as you go. Um, but I think it's a really nice job. We have another question? Those was two, we had two already? Okay, so how did you guys feel about? Oh, we only had one. So who did I give the other question? Oh, I'm so sorry, you're right behind me. <laughs> Out of sight, out of mind. Okay. Um, talk about a time you set a goal for yourself. How did you go about ensuring that you would meet your objective? Um, so during my senior year of high school, um, as the captain of my soccer team, in the prior years we've always had sub 500 <coughs> years and never really made states or anything. So a goal for our senior year was to make states, make counties, and all that. And um, you know, I pushed a lot of the guys very hard that year. Made sure we were all on stuff in the preseason. And as a result, you know, we made counties and states and had a successful year. Talk about a time you set a goal for yourself. How did you go about ensuring that you would meet your objective? Um, set a goal for myself to uh, play college baseball. And uh, in order to reach that goal, pretty much every day throughout high school, I would go and uh, get to work out or do something related to baseball just to make sure that I was getting better every day. And then it worked out. 
talk about a time you set a goal for yourself. How did you go about ensuring that you would meet your objective? Um, uh, I set a goal for myself to make sure like I'm on time and like at all my classes. So uh, I'm able to set that by just like continuing like telling myself like this is what you need to do. Like it may not always be the easy thing. <coughs> It'd be nice to stay in bed, but it's better to get out and go to all your classes and be on time. Okay. So, what about the uh, situation action result? What did they do well? What do you think, Hunter? Um, they were like they had to do an eye contact. Mm -hmm. like, every like as soon as I got done saying the question, they would all look at me and like tell me it, like how the actual interview was. So, yeah, good feedback. Mm -hmm. What else, Cameron? Uh, I think they were all confident in what they were saying. Uh, it was more of a positive story. Mm -hmm. They showed their confidence through the words. Real, it felt genuine. So that's what you want. You want your personality to come through. You want those stories to be authentic and not something you just made up, you know, on, on, the, uh, on the fly. So one thing I would say, Andrew, you, when you said, and it worked out, <coughs> if I didn't know that you played at Elon Baseball, you want to tell, tell that person. <coughs> Spell it out for them. Make it, make it obvious. What else? Anything that they might have done differently or better? I think good feedback. Okay. Posture is something you can take a look at, but you know, that's something to work on. Even if you just work on it a little bit at a time in class, um, every time you come to a business class, start to think of yourself you know, as the person in the suit who's sitting up and wants to have that respect and wants to have that attention and poise. It takes a little, little work, a little bit at a time to get there. So we're going to switch gears. Um, I'm going to let you, if you want to um, work on an extra credit um, assignment, it's only a few points. but it allows you to give yourself some feedback, what you, um, at least three things you did well and one thing you could improve from this exercise. And if you decide not to do that, I'll let you get started on the homework that's due Wednesday. All right? Um, any questions for me about this process? Okay. Well, thank you then.